I skipped a slide here uh, because in this video I want to go directly into what you're looking for and how to study for the rest of this material. So what you're going to see is that um, it is very different and all of unit 4 when we get there will be like what's coming up here where you're going to be learning um, different infectious diseases and the pathogens that cause them. The goal here, or my goal, is for you to have familiarity with these and to understand what they are and, and recognize them when they are discussed and to know something about them. And along the way, we're going to learn a lot of other things that will help, um, help you understand treatments and uh, prevention. Um, but the main thing to think about is that you need to approach this a little bit differently. And so let me show you some examples. So the most common test questions you're going to get on this kind of material, so on uh, part, so some of these will be on the upcoming quiz, and there will be some of these on the exam, and then the entire unit four exam. It'll be like, what organism causes this disease? So you have to know which organism causes which disease. In some cases it's easy, because they have the same name. In other cases, it isn't, because you have a species name versus a different disease that's named after some dead person. Um, more important are going to be the questions where I describe a disease. I'll give you symptoms, I'll give you some, some other information about it, like um, maybe where it occurs in the world, what risk factors are, things like that, and then you'll tell me what disease it is. So the best way to study for these questions is to do a lot of memorization using flashcards that are spatially organized, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, because again, what you're looking for is, is as much information as you can retain about every disease so that when you hear them described, you can um, remember what they are. I'm not really going to ask you, for this disease, what are the two treatments or anything like that? Um, but I, I'll give you a bunch of facts, and those should trigger your memory. And that's ultimately um, what we would hope you'd have in a clinic anyway. Um, the more you remember, the easier these questions are going to be. And, um, yeah, there it is. So when I said spatially organized flashcards, what I'm talking about is a flashcard or maybe so a lot of students use like big flashcards or half pieces of paper where you might put um, the name of the disease on one side and on the other all the rest of the information you might put the causative organization and organ the causative sorry organism in the upper left you might put um, the main risk factors in the upper right you might put the uh, major treatments in the lower left or something like that. So look through this and get a sense of what kinds of things you're going to be memorizing and then figure out where you can put them on flashcards. That will allow you to use the same flashcards to study all of that different stuff just by covering up part of the card. Um, and like I said, that will, that will help you. Um, work with classmates to make these. I highly recommend um, go on the, the Q&A board if you haven't already and, said, and, and ask people if they want to work with you to make um, flashcards because, yeah, it will help you all. Um, okay, enough of that. What I'm not going to ask you would be to like list symptoms of a disease or list treatments. Um, this is not a class where you're learning how to diagnose or treat diseases, so we don't need to get to that level. Um, I'm not going to ask you about the specific phylogeny of any one, um, any, any one pathogen beyond you should know what group it's from. You should know if it's a protist or a fungus. You should know later on, is it a gram-positive bacterium, is it an RNA virus, that kind of thing that you should know, but I won't ask you what phylum they're from or anything like that. Um, and I, I won't ask you to diagnose an illness through case studies. Um, that's not what this course is for. Uh, if you're 
curious about learning diagnosis, um, get the textbook. The textbook has an entire chapter devoted to showing you how diagnosis works. Um, and um, additionally, I would recommend the book I'm showing here, Clinical Microbiology Made Ridiculously Simple. This Made Ridiculously Simple is a book series where they mostly target these at like medical students. And this is, by all accounts, the best one in the series. It's a book um, that a person would use um, to study for, I think, the infectious disease certification or whatever it is that infectious disease specialists have to take. Um, so it is full of tr specific treatment information, specific um, diagnostic information, and reviews of the basic microbiology of all this stuff. I use this book a lot to get um, treatment and diagnostic information uh, to flesh out things that are missing from your textbook. And if you're curious, you can get a copy of it for not super expensive. The other thing it has, um, this silly picture with a person looking at these strange things, the book is full of strange drawings like this, where this is actually how they draw certain um, protists. This is how they would draw certain types of viruses. This would be certain types of amoeba. This would be a worm of some kind. They, they make lots of mnemonic devices whenever possible using pictures. So this can show you how to make some really good mnemonic devices. Um, the other thing is that laboratory activities in this course um, are meant to help you understand how um, diagnostic procedures work. Um, ideally, if lab goes well, you would understand the, um, the basis of the diagnostic technologies um, that are used in clinics now. So this is going to be a list of the facts you would want to memorize for every disease. So first, the causative agent. What is it? Um, and what characteristics of it would be memorable? But definitely, what is it called? That's the first thing to memorize. And you'll get points on the exam just by knowing which, bec or which organism causes which disease. And then what, what is the patient going to go through? What are the signs and symptoms? Um, how does it progress? Does it get worse or better? Which body systems are affected? Um, and what are the common outcomes? Does the person get better or don't they? Another big thing is going to be risk factors. So who gets that disease? Um, and what predicts whether someone's going to get it or not? Uh, I've been reading about really terrifying viruses that are spread by um, bat urine that collects on palm trees. So that's an example of something you would need to know if you were reading about that particular virus, but we won't cover that one because it doesn't occur in North America yet. Um, and speaking of where diseases occur, look at the epidemiology. So how is a disease spread? How common is it? So sometimes I will give you incidence and prevalence numbers, and sometimes I won't. And I don't want you to memorize the numbers. I want you to memorize, is this extremely common? Is it like malaria, where there are hundreds of millions of cases every year? Or is it more like... Um, more like the meningoencephalitis caused by Nagleria falleri, where there are like 10 cases per year. Um, that's the kind of thing I would want you to know. Not the number, but where would you put it on a scale of how common it is. And on the test, I'll give you the number. And if you see 200 million, you know I'm not talking about the one that only causes 10 infections. Um, in terms of prevention and treatment, I'll give you specific information about treatments, um, like which antibiotics are commonly used. Um, and I don't care if you memorize that or not. Uh, but what I do want you to know for all of these is, 
Is there routine treatment? Is treatment straightforward? Do antibiotics work to protect a person? Or are the side effects really bad? Or do they need some really rare treatment um, that doesn't work very well? Those are all possible things we can enc encounter. And then um, more, more so for Unit 4 than for now, uh, virulence factors. We are going to look at, in some cases, at the, the, the characteristics of the microorganism that allow them to cause disease. And so if I bring those up, you should know those also. So there is a lot of stuff for you to know. Um, again, the more you memorize, the easier it's going to be to answer the test questions. Um, and by flashcards, I mean big pieces of paper with all these things spread out on them. The other thing is that some of, some of the diseases will have three or four slides full of information and others just won't. And so if this information isn't on the slides, you don't need to know it. Only need to know what I put in the slides. So speaking of the slides, um, in some cases there are multiple pathogens that cause the same disease, so they're grouped together. Well, make sure um, you're able to describe the, the disease and know all the different pathogens that can cause it. Um, generally, you want to ask yourself, why is this particular disease or pathogen included in the course? Um, there are a lot of others that are not included. And the major reasons would be either it's common, and so any clinician is going to see it, a case that would be like Candida albicans infections. Um, is it rare um, but severe? So is it something um, off the top of my head? So you'll see like Blastomyces is a fungus that causes a rare but severe infection. Or maybe it's extremely rare but extremely severe and the, the most the best example of this is Nigleria fowleri that um, causes something like 30 cases per year in the U.S., but a lot of them end up on the news because that's an organism that will eat a person's brain. Um, so that is a spectacularly horrible thing. So we cover that. If a disease has a lot of different slides, um, like you'll see in this lecture, malaria has a lot of different slides. Um, I do want you to get something out of all of those slides. So be ready for that. Um, the last thing, uh, you know what? No, that's enough for this video. So uh, now you know what you're looking for and how to study it. And um, in the next video, we will jump right in.